So hello, my name is Vicenzo Ciorbaru, and today we're going to talk about MariaDB roles as part of the MariaDB FOSDEM dev room. So a little bit about myself. Now, I've been a MariaDB developer for uh, more than six years now, and I've taken part in implementing a significant number of features, including roles, window functions, as well as compatibility layers uh, for uh, uh, MySQL and MariaDB migration, as well as distributions and other uh, topics. So today uh, we're going to dig into roles. The purpose of this talk is to give you an introduction into MariaDB roles, how they are supposed to be used, and some of the benefits and differences with uh, other databases. Um, so roles initially were um, part of the open source database world, um, released by Postgres in 2005. Uh, MariaDB followed in 2013 with the release of 10.0, and then they were added into MySQL 8.0 uh, at a later date, 2016. Uh, the good part about roles is that most features correspond to the SQL standards, so the implementation is pretty much similar uh, across databases, each with its own differences and extensions. Uh, MariaDB follows the standard the closest, so uh, whatever you see here, that's what the standard generally requires. Um, so what are roles? Well, roles are um, kind of like users, but they have some special powers. Um, roles, just like users, can access objects in a database. They can read, write tables, create and drop databases, or do any other uh, different um, operation like creating users or setting up replication. Uh, what cannot be done, however, with roles is to log into the database server. Uh, and this is a diff the first difference we can encounter. Uh, MySQL does allow authentication with roles. Uh, now, the special powers of roles is that they can inherit rights from other roles. And this is very powerful. We're going to see this a bit later. Uh, roles can be granted to users, much like you would grant a regular privilege to a user, uh, and then they can be subsequently activated. Simply granting the role doesn't mean that the user gets the access. Um, they need to enable the role via the command called set role. Now, the benefit of roles is that um, due to their nature, they simplify uh, administering the database, which means easier maintenance and potential auditing to see which users have access to which resources. Uh, and speaking of access to resources, it's trivial to implement the least privileged principle using roles. Just don't enable uh, roles that you don't need and uh, the solution is achieved. Now, uh, you might think that roles have a performance impact However, we've worked very hard to make sure that it's not the case. Uh, for um, most practical examples, this will not be a problem. And with the addition of default role, uh, which came in um, the version of 10.1 of MariaDB, um, with default role, you can integrate legacy applications and make use of roles functionality without having to modify the, date, the application at all. Uh, to better showcase this, I like to use examples and use cases. So here we're going to take a simplified data warehouse and we're going to uh, work with transactions. We have a number of users that want to do different tasks. So Rachel is part of the reporting department, so she wants to look at data. We also have an import robot, which its own purpose is to import uh, data into the database, nothing else. Then we have Dave, who is a developer, which means that Dave needs to have full access to the data warehouse databases, including the staging one. And then we have Alex. He is an admin and he can do all that Dave can do, but also create other users and create basically other developers. Um, now, the way we do this and we're using roles is we create um, roles specifically for, for this task. 
So we're going to have a create. We're going to have to create a report role, an import role, a developer role, and an admin role. And I'm going to only grant select to the report role, insert to the import role, um, all privileges on the where on the databases to the dev, and also to the admin. But also the admin gets the ability to create more users. Um, now. Let's have a look at uh, what's going on here. So um, the final part is what we call the syntax for granting roles. And, and here we grant Rachel the report role. We got grant the import robot the import role. Then we grant Dave the developer role. And finally, Alex the admin role. Uh, if you want to look at this from uh, visually, uh, roles are in circles, brown. Uh, we have users at the bottom. An arrow represents a grant. So Ra Rachel got the report role, and then the report role in turn has the select privilege. The same for import, dev, and admin. Um, notice that there is a lot of redundancy between the dev and the admin role. And the question is, can we do better? Uh, the, the point is to simplify uh, the way we do database administration. So how do we do it? Well, uh, this is where roles hierarchies come into play. And this is the best uh, that roles have to offer. You can eliminate uh, any duplication by using inheritance, much like a, you would when uh, creating a class hierarchy in a object-oriented programming language. Um, now, the rights that were granted to a role propagate to grantees. And that um, that means that um, we can, uh, here's our example from before. Now, uh, here are the duplicate commands. Now we can get rid of all this by simply uh, giving the admin uh, role, the uh, granting it the developer role. And by doing this, we've eliminated duplication and we've achieved the same thing. So admin now inherits all the privileges on the data warehouse and staging databases. And here's the visual example. Pre these are the uh, grants we are removing. And we're, we're simply removing them by granting admin to dev directly. Now we need to be careful here because simply granting roles can introduce problems. If for some reason trying to grant a role to another role would create a cycle. So for example, uh, if you have role A granted to role B, and then role B granted to role C, and then finally you're trying to grant role C to role A, you'd create a loop um, within the roles. And MariaDB will disallow this, you'll get an error when you try to create the loop. MySQL on the other hand will uh, let you create cycles. Now, the problem with cycles is that effectively they um, nullify the, the hierarchy and every role in the cycle has the same rights. And that's why you need to be careful because you might end up giving a certain role more rights than you expect. Um, now, uh, when it comes to performance, um, you might be wondering how is this achieved how is this whole role hierarchy um, stored, computed, and used for uh, privilege checking? Well, you don't want to check the whole hierarchy for every query. Just That just takes too much time. So to fix this, MariaDB and MySQL implemented caching methodologies. And the, the way MariaDB does caching is when we first start up the server, we load all the grants into memory and pre-compute the effective rights for every role in the, in the graph, which means that we no longer need to go deep inside the graph to find the effective privileges. Uh, the first jump has what we need. Uh, we only recompute uh, this graph when stuff changes, for example, during a grant statement, which takes, which usually, usually doesn't happen very often. Uh, MySQL, on the other hand, has a slightly different approach in that um, MySQL will, uh, whenever a user connects, 
it will create uh, what we call an authentication ID. And this authentication ID is a combination of the username and all the roles that it has active uh, at that point. And it will compute the effective rights for this whole combination and store it in the cache once. Um, which means that for subsequent queries, uh, the writes are going to be fast, the, the checks are going to be fast. Um, but the first time you do this connection, uh, it's going to take a bit longer to uh, get the correct access. Now, with that said, uh, both databases do optimize for the critical path, and that is uh, frequent uh, queries and le not the less frequent uh, grants changes. Uh, MySQL's implementation effectively has no performance penalty on grants, whilst it does have a slower first uh, access check. MariaDB has slightly slower grant operations by computing the necessary steps during the grant, but overall, um, the performance should be very similar when it comes to checking. Now, um, the other thing we need to uh, look for is how can we do the least privilege principle? And this is simple, but uh, let's see what can happen if we don't do it properly. So let's imagine Dave has a tricky bug to fix and he needs uh, to clone some tables to investigate. So with our previous example, he activates his developer role by doing set role, and then he gets all the rights necessary to work. Um, he creates a um, transactions staging table, just like the one in production, and gets to experimenting with different transactions. Finally, at the end of the day, he finishes, he finds the problem and wants to clean up after himself. He does this by issuing drop tables transactions. And suddenly he realizes he forgot to change the database to be staging. So because he had the rights on both the production and the staging database, um, he didn't uh, drop the correct one. And now he has other problems to deal with. Now, all this can be avoided. And the way you should do this is you should spill it roles into safe and dangerous ones. And by dangerous, it can be any role that has access to data and is able to modify it. Safe roles are probably just read-only roles or um, something that it cannot mistakenly um, make, your, make your application have some downtime. Uh, and you should only activate dangerous roles whenever you need them, but uh, not for longer than that. And the the good part about roles is that changing a role is very cheap, whilst um, previously you would have to change users, which would Im incur potentially a bigger overhead. So this is the advantage of using roles. Uh, differences between MySQL and MariaDB are, are, there are a few, but they're not uh, insurmountable. So MySQL allows enabling multiple roles at once, and this can be done with MariaDB by doing an aggregate role. So just create an intermediate role, and you're going to activate that one. The intermediate role should have all the multiple active roles granted to it. Uh, additionally, MySQL implements mandatory roles, and these are always active for a user, and they are granted automatically when creating a user. Um, MariaDB does not have this. Uh, but you can probably achieve a similar setup with default roles. Um, both MySQL and MariaDB have implemented default role. And the, the thing about default role is that it effectively runs a set role command during connection, which means that you have the rights as soon as you connect it to the database, no need to run a separate query for that. Now let's talk about system tables. So MariaDB system, uh, MariaDB stores its roles in system tables. Before 10.4, uh, the table name was MySQL user, and now it's been renamed and changed in 10.4 to be MySQL global priv. For both cases, you need to look for the is role flag, either as a column or part of the JSON description document. Uh, if the is role is marked as yes, then you cannot log in with that entry. Uh, because it is designated as a role. Um, 
Other than that, the roles are completely identical to users. You, you will find the same fields, such as um, the access bits for each individual uh, grant. Uh, now, secondly, we need to store the grants somewhere. And these are basically stored as edges in the graph. Uh, MySQL roles mapping is what uh, MariaDB uses. There is an addition, co additional column inside, which is admin option. And this column means that if a role is granted, it can be granted to others by that user. Uh, so it, it lets you propagate the role to other uh, roles or users. Uh, metadata about roles can be fetched from information schema. We have enabled roles and applicable roles. Uh, MySQL 8019 has introduced some more tables uh, that are part of the SQL standard and MariaDB should probably implement them as well, most likely in the next release. And these roles are role table grants, role routine grants, role column grants, and administrable role authorizations. Now, all these are uh, things that MariaDB can implement, and it probably will. But for the moment, MySQL has an edge when it comes to the information schema completeness. So overall, uh, both databases do allow for role-based access control. Uh, from a functional perspective, they pretty much get the job done. Uh, there are some differences, but most of them should probably not impact your, um, your use case much. Um, there are some differences when it comes to migrating from MySQL to MariaDB, and this is what I'm going to cover next. Now, uh, given that MariaDB, My MySQL introduced roles in 8.0, uh, the only way to migrate from MySQL to MariaDB is by using uh, a dump and restore. But for system tables, this is not enough because the corresponding tables do not match. MySQL uses different tables to store roles information. Um, there had, there's been work in this area though, and thanks to uh, a task called MDEV 23630, it is possible to now drop, uh, to dump uh, roles, uh, not as insert statements, but as create user and role statements. Um, and you can do this by running MariaDB dump on MySQL. The flag is uh, dash dash system and the switch for it is user to get all the user uh, grants. But there still are problems that cannot be solved automatically, at least not at this point. Uh, there are privileges in MySQL 8.0 that do not map to MariaDB's privilege system. The names do not match. So you can get a dump from MySQL with the correct create role and grants, but you will have to edit them manually uh, whenever you encounter things that do not work on MariaDB. Um, we have created a task to track progress on this. Um, I believe there is a need for um, as much automation as possible, but there is a limit to how much we sh probably should invest into simply maintaining the differences between MySQL and MariaDB. And this is actually a question for uh, those listening. Uh, do you think we should do this? Um, do, you should, do you think we should pursue um, the ease of migration from MySQL to MariaDB more? Or do you think that the current setup is enough? So let us know. And with that said, I couldn't be here without um, FOSDEM having organized this uh, great conference. And I also uh, couldn't do my day-to-day -day job if it weren't for my DB's Foundation sponsors. They help enable me to work on MariaDB and be part of the MariaDB community. So thank you for everyone involved. You can reach out to me on uh, Zulip. You can also find me by email, vicenzu at mariadb.org. And you can find more about me at mariadb.org slash vicenzu. I hope this information was useful. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of FOSTEM.